so hello everyone. My name is Victoria. I'm a manager at uh, Coinvest Capital, a uh, venture capital fund which uh, Coinvest alongside Business Angels. And uh, at the moment we have uh, uh, 20 portfolio companies and uh, we have made uh, these investments with more than 80 business angels. And uh, approximately a uh, half year ago, when we uh, have started uh, discussions with the startup Lithuania, um, what should uh, be discussed on the scene during this event, uh, I have proposed uh, the theme about business angels investment because um, uh, I think that uh, it's getting the main uh, uh, main investors when we talk about uh, the startup uh, funding. Uh, if we look at the definition of uh, angel investor, uh, it says that um, an angel investor is high net worth individual uh, with a deep experience in business development uh, who provides uh, financial uh, backing for small startups and entrepreneurs. But um, in Lithuania, our business angels uh, community is still uh, in the early stage and um, we can see that a lot of people want to be um, business angels uh, even if they do not have enough uh, money or they do not have experience in business development and investment. So uh, who is business angel investor at all? Who can be a business angel and uh, who shouldn't be one? How not to make a mistake as founder when accepting business angel investment because at the beginning founders um, want to raise uh, a lot um, more money and uh, they do not think about uh, the risk which could occur when a startup uh, select uh, the wrong business angel. So we will discuss this uh, matter right now and uh, today on the scene we have uh, incredible people with um, uncountable uh, experience. So um, I think that um, uh, I can uh, additionally introduce you, so Rita Sakos. Rita is most active investor uh, with Coinvest Capital. Uh, she has made uh, five investments uh, with us, and I think it's one-fourth of our portfolio. Hmm. Um, in her personal portfolio, she has uh, more than 15 <laughs> companies, uh, and some of them have already exited. Uh, Rita has uh, a lot of experience in medtech, AI, and other industries. Also, Rita is a uh, uh, founding member of uh, Lithuanian business network Litvan. And uh, as a part Canadian, she uh, is making, uh, uh, she's building bridges between uh, uh, Canadian and Lithuanian business angels. So, warm applause. Thank you, thank you. Also, welcome Ruslana Strakšelis, the CEO and founder of Milo Appliances, the startup which reinvents uh, the blender and uh, are planning to reinvent uh, the whole our kitchen. Ruslana uh, had uh, five investment rounds during which he has attracted around 25 investors in his company and is one of the best fundraisers in the whole startup community. Sometimes we even joke between our team that uh, if uh, we plan to raise a, a venture capital fund, uh, so uh, we will ask uh, Ruslanas to join us uh, <laughs> for the fundraising processes. Lars? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, let's welcome uh, my friend Gedry Stemantas, uh, who is both a serial entrepreneur and early stage investor. Uh, Giedrus is a founder of tech and traditional companies in Lithuania and uh, Denmark. He is also a business mentor who helps early stage companies to build the um, business strategy and plans. Uh, Giedrus lived in Denmark for more than 10 years and uh, just last year he came back to Lithuania and has a lot of plans with the new startups and investments. So, I will join you. Thank you very much. And maybe I will start with Rita. Uh, Rita, when was the moment when you have realized um, that uh, it is now, it is now um, I should start uh, to invest into startups? Uh, did you have uh, specific plans and roadmap for that or was it spontaneous move? So um, I'm very glad to be here, by the way. Thank you very much for inviting me. Um, 
Yeah, of course I had some kind of a roadmap. I started my career out in corporate venture capital. So uh, we were investing in startups and doing minority equity investments into high-tech startups in Israel, throughout Europe, and uh, North America. And so at that time, I was always attracted to innovation. And I was really searching for that here in Lithuania when I moved here in 2003. But of course, it was uh, still very, very early. And uh, there was no um, you know, kind of formal ecosystem, per se. So I always had uh, kind of an idea. I had done some personal investments in North America. And uh, when I returned to Lithuania after a short break around 2012, 13, I saw a new Lithuania, a different Lithuania, where we already had early stage venture capital, um, but what was lacking was kind of an angel network through which you could look at deals. And so I was very happy to meet with Gitanis Galkis at the time, and uh, we formed Litban. And so in terms of a roadmap, I had a roadmap because um, I'm also a scuba instructor, and so I saw, you know, kind of what, uh, you know, total trashy situation our oceans are in and beaches are in from you know an environmental perspective and i always thought you know maybe some kind of an innovation that would help you know either clean the oceans or or, or you know deal with kind of that aspect but then i realized in lithuania uh, that was kind of too short an investment thesis or, or too narrow an investment thesis so i started kind of branching out and looking at things that really excited me and for the most part that's very high tech deep tech innovation and kind of bringing up the past of where i used to work Hey, thank you. Uh, Ruslanas, you are a great fundraiser. Can you uh, share with us uh, some details on uh, what kind of business angels do you have in your portfolio? And uh, how can you describe uh, a perfect business angel? Okay. Well, uh, actually, I counted this morning the, the, the actual number, and, and it was 27. Uh, so those are really successful entrepreneurs here in Lithuania. Uh, some of them are my friends. Uh, also including my best friend, uh, a neighbor living next door, and you know, just uh, really people around. So when you, when you don't afraid to talk about what you do, somehow naturally some people decide just to join. Uh, regarding the best angel, I say the one who actually wants to help you to, to, to be successful, uh, not the one who is actually seeking for investment and return. So, you know, and there's, there are a lot of things that uh, are coming together when you want to help. So networking, you know, uh, just looking into the business and everything else. If, if, you, if you can see that, if you feel their um, support, then that's the best person to work with. Uh, but can you indicate, uh, do you have uh, good, bad uh, business angels also in your pool? Because, you know, when you have 27 uh, uh, angel investors, so it's a lot. And uh, uh, do they uh, participate uh, in your daily business all the time, or you just reach them uh, when you need them? How does it work? The good, the bad. Uh, let's m maybe let's leave that for, for the end. But uh, so basically, what, what you expect from angels is uh, uh, some business experience that they can share. There's some, you know, in startups and doing traditional business, there are some things that are common. Uh, networking. Uh, business people, they do have a lot of people, uh, know a lot of people, also know invest investors, you, and you are constantly raising more and more money, so that helps a lot. Um, and that psychological support as well, you know, doing a startup is not, uh, not the easiest road, and, and, and when you feel there are people that are actually supporting you, believing in you, then that provides a lot of motivation. Uh, one of the best angels uh, that we have, he actually, you know, he would constantly call and say, how are you, how are you doing, how are you feeling, what's the next challenge, how can I help you? And basically, uh, I can say his name, it's uh, Vitanis, so basically he is like, Okay, you are doing the next round. You need an investor. So I'm going to check my list, and every round he would, you know, he would invite someone, and someone will invest. Uh, so that's, that's that's the best person. Okay, thank you. Uh, I think that Rita maybe have experience uh, with a different kind of attitude when you're asking a startup, "How are you doing?" 
Yeah, uh, so there are startup founders, actually I was thinking this very same thing when Ruslanas was speaking, there are startup founders that hate to be asked how they're doing. Um, and, you know, it's all a matter of balance. So it's, you know, we're all different, all founders are different. And, you know, some founders are actually very interesting and esoteric people and they have to be that way because, you know, they're odd. To be number one, you have to be odd. So I think, uh, you know, you, you got to kind of understand the, the relationship and, you know, understand kind of how to approach your founders. And, you know, you can't be crowding them every single day, calling them, not to say I was doing that, but, <laughs> no, uh, you know, asking them, you know, kind of for numbers, reports, whatever. I mean, it gets old. So you, you can't, uh, you know, you, you can't be too much on, the, on, on, on that aspect either. Okay, thanks. Uh, Gedrus, uh, from my experience working with so many different business angels, uh, I have noticed that uh, some of them are trying to be as passive as they can, and uh, some of them are very active and act like uh, co-founders in, um, in the startup. Uh, what is the good balance while providing help by business angels for the startup uh, founders? Well, I think, uh, yeah, I think the key word here is, is balance, right? So you want somebody who, is, who, who knows about your business, who gets involved when they need to, but doesn't put too much control over, you know, what you do daily or what you're going to do today. You know, you're, you're not supposed to have morning calls to your investors every day. That's not the job of an investor, right? Um, so, so that's 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 the balance. And entrepreneurship is, I think, is, is very messy, and it, and 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 founders have to be left alone in a way, you know, to be to be able to to, to think freely, to innovate, uh, to make mistakes and learn from them. But at the same time, the structure has to be put in place of of certain control. Because if you want to scale a business, if you want to expand it, and and, and move the business fo forward and make it profitable, you have to have a, a certain uh, structure in place and of course angels uh, want that and, 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 and they can help but at the same time structure can you know be uh, uh, harmful to the business uh, for example I know a story where uh, uh, you know a hardware startup uh, rose quite a uh, quite a little bit of money um, but their angel said you know well you're gonna get a half of it now and after you reach the certain milestone you're gonna get the next uh, you know half and they're like, well, okay, you know, but it's a hardware startup. So what they did, you know, they, you know, basically put that investment into, well, you know all about that, right? Uh, into, into their products, because the product was already developed into the products, into their stock. And, and guess what? The, no, there was no money left for sales, for marketing. And obviously it was very hard to reach the milestone because of that, because of that, this very structure. So what they ended up doing, they ended up going and raising another round to reach <laughs> to reach the milestone of the first round, um, and that basically you know diluted investors' equity and and so on. So I think kind of investors in this case they shot themselves in the foot with this kind of rigid structure, um, and that didn't help anybody. So and it's it's balance between you know free freedom of mm -hmm. of innovation and 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 control over you know business processes. And maybe Rita, uh, you can add, uh, what kind of attitude can make a negative impact in the growth of the startup? Because uh, Yedris mentioned one example, and maybe from your experience, you have uh, something to add. Uh, what, uh, because uh, you are syndicating your investments with other business angels, uh, mm -hmm. especially from Litban, and you also can see a lot of different uh, um, situations where uh, business angels are acting differently. Yeah, I think, you know, rigidity is never a good thing. You have to be flexible in life and uh, you have to understand because you invested in the company, that doesn't make you a subject matter expert. So, you know, you still have to, you know, um, be that, uh, you know, cheerleader for the, uh, for the uh, founder and for their team. And, uh, you know, make sure that you're, you're motivating and, and moving along, I think, you know, questioning things is very healthy, but, you know, I think that there's obviously boundaries to that as well. So, you know, you really want to be motivational. You want to provide uh, the support as needed. Um, uh, you, you, you definitely do need reporting and you need financial hygiene, no question. Every company needs that. Every person needs that, as a matter of fact. But I think... Um, uh, you know, I, I think really 
the biggest, uh, you know, the biggest advantage to having business angels as your uh, as your um, in investors is that that networking that comes with them. You know, the the know-how, the maybe having done it before, the experience with different markets that you know they're able to share with you. And uh, you know, I mean, I, I just think that you just don't want business angels who are very rigid and who are going to not let you sway because you know shit happens, honestly. And you know, you're going to come into some kind of a dead end, and you're going to have to pick. You know, do we go route A, B, or C? And uh, you know, there are probably pluses and minuses to each one, and you don't want someone who's not going to let you do a certain thing just because it's in their minds not to. So uh, I have noticed also that uh, not always uh, the fault of being uh, the bad or ugly business angel uh, comes from investor by itself uh, because uh, angels are forced to act so uh, because uh, after the um, in investment is received, founders just delete business angel from their list mm -hmm. and uh, they, are n uh, they are not communicating with, uh, with investors. Uh, they are not providing, as you mentioned, uh, financial reports or budgeting, etc. So, what do you think uh, are the main mistakes that founder founders are doing uh, after the uh, receiving the investment? Me? Yeah, I think that you can start <laughs> it because. <Okay. laughs> um, so, I I think. Um, you know, founders still have to realize that this is a relationship, and you know, I don't want to call it a beauty contest, but you still have to realize what uh, you know what you want out of your your business angels as well. So, you know, again, it's it's a matter of expectations and setting those expectations, you know, before you get to the other side of the investment. So, um, you know, getting to know. Uh, your a business angels, uh, you know, finding out whether you know you mesh or not, and and you know, kind of, um, uh, I guess, kind of foreseeing what things might look like uh, once the uh, investment is made. So it's it's really, I mean, you're going to be these these relationships last longer than your typical marriages. So I mean, you're you got to really be sure that that you want it, you know. Uh, Ruslan, uh, you have uh, two kinds of investors in your company, uh, business uh, angel investors and uh, venture capital funds. Uh, can you elaborate uh, which investors are better and uh, in which specific uh, stage and what kind of invest, uh, investors are better uh, for startups, for beginners? Is it venture capital funds or mm, business angels? Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it all uh, it all uh, comes uh, to the stage where you are right now. So in the beginning, definitely, it's much easier to work with angels. Uh, it's much quicker, uh, less uh, paperwork. <laughs> you know, just uh, and angels are willing to invest in more in people, more into the idea, into the prototypes. So definitely, uh, that's that's a, a good way to start with. Uh, at later stages, uh, it's just, you know, the, the tickets become so big. Uh, and uh, wh what are VCs? VCs are gathering other money. So it's, you know, it's, it's money from other uh, businesses all come together and then someone, someone is managing that. So at a later stage, there's no other choice than, you know, go to the VCs. So that's probably the biggest uh, difference. Uh, they are not like better or worse, it's just really the stage. Mm -hmm. And how to find uh, business angels? Uh, uh, do startups uh, should go, um, should uh, startups go to a lead ban uh, organization or should they go to, for example, Coinvest Capital or business angel fund uh, or sh somehow they should uh, connect directly to, 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 to the business angels or potential investors? Uh, all, 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 all the roads are good. <laughs> I mean, you, you need to do whatever you can, so and you do it sim simultaneously. Uh, basically, when we started, uh, all the bands were just, you know, just coming up. So uh, we had to talk to everyone we knew, friends, neighbors, and and you know, friends of friends, and and so on. But uh, recently, we had uh, a round that, uh, yeah, we did uh, pitches for all the bands in Baltic states, and and we got investors from there. So. And right now, it's actually it's it's, it's a rather uh, convenient when you wh when you can gather quite a few people and uh, pitch uh, you know all together and uh, and then th they probably some angels will form a syndicate and they invest together. Uh, yeah, so that's that's a really convenient way through the bands. 
Mm -hmm. um, and um, uh, we heard that um, there are some new uh, attitude for uh, warm uh, introductions, for example. And um, do you use them? Do you ask uh, for someone to introduce you to a potential uh, investor, or is it uh, an old-fashioned? Oh no, no, no! That's uh, an essential part. <laughs> Uh, you know, just from the, from the perspective of the investor, they are getting so many pitches and so many startups and so you know. So you are another white uh, sheet there. So it's really hard to uh, get through. So everyone, uh, a person would actually look into your pitch and try to understand the idea. So once you have a recommendation, then you can kind of pass that, and it's uh, much easier and faster to talk to the person. So definitely, uh, recommendations uh, helps a lot. Okay, yeah, just you have experience of doing business both in Lithuania and in Denmark, and uh, can you indicate the main differences of ecosystems? Uh, how different is the attitude of uh, business angels in these two countries, and uh, do we have something to learn from Danish uh, investors and Danish founders? Yeah, well, where do I start, right? I mean, um, <laughs> and, it does, and I don't mean this in a negative way, right? Um, Oh, the countries are different, and, and Lithuania is kind of like a, an, uh, I would like to think of a, like a younger cousin who like try, try, tries to t t tag along, you know, on, uh, on a trips and stuff. Um, but uh, Denmark is different, and I think uh, uh, there are more. I think the biggest difference is that we the, the Denmark or Copenhagen scene, for example, or Oresund, uh, that you know is coupled together with Malmo, they have. They have more startups, I think. Um, well, they are also a bigger country, right? And they also have more unicorns. Um, and I think that also has to do with the founder profile that you see, what you see in Denmark and what you see in Lithuania. Um, what, and, and of course, I am speaking from my own personal experience, so it, I might just you know, be way off. But um, what, I, what, I, what I saw in Denmark, the, the founders are, are, are younger. They, uh, they tend to, to dive into the startup, uh, you know, with, with their own feet uh, because they are not afraid of taking risks, and I think that that can be attributed to the welfare state. You know, the, so what's the worst that can happen? You know, well, you know, I'm just going to get a nice salary from the government if I fail. So you literally you don't have any risk when you're starting your own business. While Lithuania, what I noticed, people tend to kind of start a, start a startup, you know, as a side business. Or uh, you know, as a side, uh, to a, they, they they do have a full-time job when they start a startup. That's what I noticed. Maybe I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm not correct. Um, and of course, uh, the business angels there are they are different in 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 a, in a couple of aspects. Uh, I think uh, uh, a lot of business angels in Denmark they have made their money through ventures already. So like they exited, they 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 have successful startups so they understand the entrepreneurship journey from the you know from the from the kind of first person perspective so that that is that that is helpful but that doesn't mean that everybody is like that you also have old money investors who are also you know after their i need to get my 6% a year you know uh, or or you know huge controls and 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 you know daily calls you you have that everywhere i think i think that's uh, uh, that's a given um, the other aspect of business angels there is that uh, the Danish are very globally minded. Mm -hmm. I think that's a very important aspect. And while we Lithuanians are doing much better in that respect, but the Danes just they just been they just been you know around longer. So they have you know networks uh, in, in in different countries. They've worked in different countries. They have investors from different countries, especially when it comes to the United States. You know that that money you know the, the scale of money there is is, is is so much different from from the European scale. Um, so 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 they they think I think more globally and 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 they help startups you know in a more global fashion, which is uh, which is uh, which is you know which is great also. Um, and do we have something to learn from them? I think yes, of course we do. You know, and, and th this is why you know I went to Denmark to learn from them, literally. Um, but uh, I, I think the biggest learning that I bring from there is 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 is, is being you know humble and honest and not being afraid of of failing and talking about it. 
right? If you fail, you need to you need to talk about it. You need to re re you know reflect on it, learn, start again, and and, and go forward. You know, the most successful entrepreneurs they're not they're not the smartest ones. They're not the strongest ones. They're, they're the most persistent ones. And you know, this is th this is this is this is something we need to learn. I think. And Rita, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, you are building bridges between Canadian and Lithuanian uh, business angels uh, communities. Uh, so uh, what can le we learn from um, Canadian uh, investors and what is the difference between uh, our situation and, and theirs? So I'm going to maybe take um, the North American perspective as mm -hmm. opposed to Canada or the States. but. Um, you know, kind of the whole concept of business angels is, is fairly new, really. I mean, it's, uh, you know, kind of think about these Shark Tank and, and Dragon's Den TV shows that became really cool kind of in the 2000s. I think something very similar, they tried to, to do something here, and I think a soup company won or something, right, on, t on TV. But, it, you know, it's kind of, let's say the past 21 years has really been kind of that, um, the momentum has been, has been gained for, uh, you know, the whole angel community. And I think um, there were dangers in the States as well when it came to business angels. And that is that, you know, you had these like celebrities that became business angels. So Ashton Kutcher all of a sudden is a business angel or Bono's a business angel and you want to do what they do. Well, trust me, they got burned big time and a lot of their investments didn't turn out. And so, you know, there still is, you know, probably a right and a wrong way uh, to do this. And I think, you know, one of the best ways of doing it is uh, through some kind of angel school. And, uh, you know, there were angel schools in the States. And then, you know, of course, in the States, they made it that only accredited angels can invest. So, you know, they they tried to minimize, you know, the risk of, you know, kind of everyone getting involved and, and you know, putting a lot of money into this highly uh, risky asset. Um, and I don't know, I mean, if I could just continue a little bit further along this thought, um, you know, most kind of starting business angels should be investing about five to 10% of whatever they have allocated for their kind of investment portfolios. And probably most of your investments should be going into something that's gonna be giving you, you know, dividends and whatever, because, you know, these investments into startups, they're not short term. I mean, you know, sh the failure is short term, usually about three years and the, the, the company fails. But for, you know, success or exit, you're looking at longer term, five, 10 years, some even longer. So, you know, and pulling your money out before that really is, uh, is very complicated. So, you know, it's a, it's a long road. And even, you know, more seasoned business angels, you know, they tend to maybe, you know, um, invest 20, 25% maybe their portfolio, but they're really seasoned angels. And a lot of them, what they tend to do is they do kind of like an evergreen fund where any returns that they get, they just pump it back into, you know, uh, investments in, in startups because, you know, it, it really is exciting. It's very interesting. And, you know, you're working on the cutting, uh, cutting edge of, uh, you know, what, what the next best thing is going to be in our lives. So, I mean, you know, eBay and Yahoo and, you know, those were kind of all started by, by the early business angels. So. Uh, thanks. Uh, you answered um, a few of my questions. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but um, uh, you mentioned um, these uh, new investors and beginners. Uh, and for example, we noticed that uh, a lot of people want to be a uh, business angel, even they do not have experience in business development. Uh, they do not have enough money. Uh, so um, maybe for Slanas, I will ask, uh, um, what do you think? Uh, is it good to have such a kind of investors, like a virgin investors uh, in the company? Because uh, how they can help you uh, except for money? Okay, so yes and no. Uh, if the intention is actually to help, and if it's that 10% of those money that you want to allocate for, for a good course, then definitely yes. Uh, if it's someone you know, who is choosing between investing into, uh, I don't know, uh, sh shares or, or real estate and then, and then startup and you know, doing the calculation how to make money out of it, then definitely no. You don't have experience, you don't know how it works. So uh, yeah. Okay, and um, maybe a question to all of you, uh, because sometimes uh, we have founders uh, who uh, come to us and uh, they show just a pitch deck and they are saying that uh, I will make something big 
and uh, they are asking for, I don't know, 100K, 200K for their idea. Uh, is it the myth uh, that you can uh, raise funding just with a pitch deck? I don't know, in Lithuania, Denmark and, and Canada? Or you probably can. I'm not going to say it's never going to happen, but it's probably, you know, a very uh, s minimal percentage of people who, who might, you know, be that, uh, you know, risk, uh, uh, not averse to risk. Um, but I think, you know, generally there's a rule of thumb that business angels still need to do uh, some amount of due diligence. And, uh, you know, they say kind of between 20 and 40 hours of due diligence increases the chances of your investment being successful. So, you know, I, you know, can it happen? Probably yes, but, um, but it's definitely not the rule and that's not the way this works, in my opinion. I've only seen, I've, I've only seen it being successful is when some founders who have already made an exit, then make an idea, and then they go to investors that they already know. Uh, and then they say, well, you know, you made some money from fr uh, with us. We have this great idea. How about, you know, you give us some money to start? Uh, yep. Other than that, I haven't seen uh, yeah, a, a, a pitch deck sale, you know. But a past success doesn't guarantee a future, future success. Future returns, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't no. know about that. And experience is typically what you get when you don't get what you expect. So I think you can get a lot of experience that way. With the hardware company, the pitch deck in the beginning is the only thing that you have. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is the way how you start. So you get the first money, you make a prototype, and, and, and then you, you, you just grow, you know. 20,000, 100,000, half a million, million, and you just go on. But uh, how can you show to, to uh, potential investors that it will work? Because, you know, it can be uh, just a paper and just an uh, idea. Yeah, you know, it just you look into the eyes and you can see that. <laughs> 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 Rita doesn't agree. Ruslan, I, I don't know, you're like the the, the uh, snake charmer or something, <laughs> right? I don't know. <laughs> but he proved that it works. <laughs> so, I, you know, I think it, it can work, but it's super small. I mean, you had to have some kind of an idea of a team. You know, th there were certain things that you had to prove and kind of, you know, there, there's still a bit more than just a, than just a deck there. Well, sure. I mean, you do have to have a little bit more than that. But uh, in the in the decision making, I understand the the way angels first decide they really look into the person and that crappy prototype, and then okay, this is, doesn't look r right. <laughs> but then again, if if they believe in the in the in the founder and then founders probably two or three people, and uh, you know, then this all happens. Okay. Um, so. Uh for the conclusion, I think that um, uh, business angel investments are on the top now, uh, especially for startups, and uh, it's really valuable for, for the whole community, and um, we are happy to, to have this uh, community in Lithuania, and it is raising. Uh, so for the final remarks, uh, maybe I will ask you to describe, uh, in your opinion, the good, the bad, and the ugly business angel. Maybe we'll start from Rita. So the good a business angel is one with a lot of experience. Like I said, experience is what you get when you don't get what you expect. So um, you've already gone through kind of the nasties. Uh, you've, you've had probably some failures. Um, and, and, you know, you, you know that y you can expect some kind of, um, some kind of difficulties and, and you'll know how to help uh, the founder maneuver the ship. Um, the bad, well, I think it's just someone with, you know, zero experience, uh, zero education in angel uh, funding and, and, uh, and, and the ugly is someone investing capital that they don't have uh, and shouldn't be investing it. You know, I mean, you, you're not going to, you know, put your house up and, and invest in some great idea. So I don't know if that answers your question, but I think kind that of, yeah. 
I think it's very little to add. Uh, I would say that for, for me, the, a, a good angel investor is, also, uh, is a person who has also gone through the same kind of uh, process. So maybe a founder who has exited or uh, has made a lot of money in the, in, 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 you know, on its own, on entrepreneurship. Um, the bad would be, uh, yeah, like a guy who, or a girl who doesn't have any experience whatsoever and then and trying to trying to kind of contribute, but the contribution is like kind of just, you know, wasting their time. And the ugly, I think, is is the one who calls you at 10, in, 10 at night and then asks, where's my money? You know, so I guess I guess that would that I would I would I would sum, up, sum it up like that. Uh, yeah, probably start from from the other end. So the ugly one uh, is <laughs> the one who is uh, kind of uh, trying to motivate you by terrorizing and, and you know using that kind of motivation. Uh, the bad one who is uh, out of goodwill trying to micromanage you. Mm -hmm. So this doesn't work. Uh, the good one is actually the one who uh, who tries to help you uh, with connections, with business experience, and so on. And I would add another one, like a true angel, the one who tries to help you, you know, in all possible ways, just, just, just to see how you succeed. You know, the, a person who you can call in the middle of the night, whatever issue, whatever challenge you have, he is there for you. So that's a true angel. Oh. Why this middle of the night stuff? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right, also. But I think it's a really good remark about uh, perfect angels. So uh, we wish... Uh, for the new founders to find uh, a perfect business angel and uh, be brave, um, just connect with uh, with potential investors, uh, even uh, not for funding, but uh, just for for some um, advice. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you all. Thank it was you. A pleasure to have you. Thank you, guys. Thank you one more time for this discussion. It was a pleasure to hear uh, different thoughts. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a big round of applause one more time to them.